Right, do you remember this car? It was the one with the excellent paint job. Go and check that out in another YouTube short. But today, we have issues with the electric power steering. I know what you're thinking. Volkswagen issues with electric power steering? Must be the wrong video. Hello and welcome to another budget and leg it video. Yes, we've got a 2010 Volkswagen Golf here and we have issues with the electronic steering. We have basically no steering, the steering is hard and we have the steering wheel light on the dash, which I will now show you in a second. So I just wanted to take off the bumper and show you a couple of little things. It's easy with the bumper off, um, so I can show you how to test things and do things. I, I more or less know what's wrong. It's a common issue with these. Um, it's going to most probably be the module, module or fuse. I've never had a wiring issue on these yet. And I'm not saying it's not the case, uh, but I just haven't seen it yet. The other issue with this is because you can see just how mangled and twisted this car is because it's been in an accident. It also puts another level in because you don't know if the wires have been trapped or anything like that or rerouted wrong and broken through and all sorts of stuff. Because you can see this has just been screwed in here, there and everywhere. Look where it shouldn't have been. To, to bodge it all back together that's for another day so let me show you oh before I do that the way I do it is first off is you plug it you plug it in to a scan tool <clears throat> and I can't communicate with the module that's kind of the big thing so that only really leaves possibly three things that could be an issue fuse wiring or module because when you can't communicate with the module that's when you know it's a power issue going to the module normally if you think about it, it makes sense. So that's the first things we need to check. But I was going to show you what it looks like on the dash first. Let me just put this back in. No, that's going to make any difference. We'll just put that back in first. I'm sure it looks like on the dash. Right, so when I start it, you can see the little steering wheel light comes on and the steering wheel is really hard to turn. It doesn't turn easy like it should. Now Volkswagen in their ultimate wisdom have made this so easy to check the oil level um, you can see when you're looking down here, so this is the battery, when you're looking down there, look, I can get two fingers in there, and the, uh, it's all the way down here. I mean, so easy to check, isn't it? So easy. You know, on the side of the road, or you're going off for a trip, and you just want to check your levels to make sure it's all okay before you go on a big trip, and, uh, strip off the fucking car to get to it or take batteries and stuff out, which causes more problems. I mean, seriously, it's a thing that needs to be checked weekly. And Volkswagen do this. Don't you just love designers and engineers? Right, when I do a YouTube shot, it's just a bit of fun. People take it way too seriously. You know, it's tongue in cheek. You're not supposed to take everything seriously. I did a YouTube short on this and I got the comments I got you wouldn't believe. Now you don't have to stick the whole car just to test it. Obviously you don't. All you have to do is take out the headlight to actually do it. But again, how annoying is that taking out a headlight to do your weekly checks? And then all the people said, you're not supposed to check them. There are lifetimes oil. No such thing as lifetimes oil. And even if there was, what happens if you get a leak, a pinhole leak somewhere? You know, there's loads of pipes connected to this. Just because it's lifetimes oil, which doesn't exist, um, doesn't mean you don't get a leak. And other people said there is no such thing as oil. You don't need oil for this particular car. It's completely electric. Uh, so I'm putting, I have made this complete electric power steering pump unit with a control module. I've made it myself in a little garage just to put into this car just to uh, pretend to annoy a few people on the internet. That's what I've done. So, hooray to me! <laughs> but seriously, go and check the comments out on the YouTube short. They are hilarious. But what I was really trying to get into is these are, you know, you should do weekly checks on any type of levels because especially if you're going on a long journey, the last thing you want is something to be low, especially where you can top it up and to make sure you don't damage it before it's too late. But as you can see on this, this isn't really an easy thing to check. And, you know, just because a headlight is easy for you to take out doesn't mean it's easy for other people to take out. They might not have the tools, they might not have the confidence to do it. So to take a headlight out to check your power steering level, in my opinion, is absolutely fucking stupid. But what's that? What's that, Woody? 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And a mechanic told me, because he says he's a mechanic and he knows everything. He told me the best and the easiest way to check your level is to take off the inner wheel arch. And I said, uh, no, it's not. And he, had, he basically said it was. So I said, so hold on. You're telling me to jack up a car, take off the wheel, take off all the inner arches, which is all normally, you know, torques, bits and stuff like that, which most people won't have is easier than taking two 10 mil bolts off to take the headlight off. Well, there you go. That's what a proper mechanic is. And obviously I'm not one of them. I have never said I was a proper mechanic. I never said I was a good mechanic. But obviously we will listen to the proper mechanic on uh, online because he obviously knows his stuff. So I do apologize. His way is a better way. I mean, the other issue, even if you could try and take that off somehow, if you've got really small hands and get in there, you're going to struggle to bloody fill it anyway. You know, just ridiculous. Yes, you can take headlights out and stuff, but I mean, it's just awkward. However you look about it, it's just awkward. It should be where you can see it straight away, like the water level. You know, it's there, bang, it's there, done. You shouldn't be having to take anything off to check levels in the car because not everyone is going to be able to do it you know it, just because it's simple for you doesn't mean it's simple for everyone else some people might not have the right tools you know there's loads of reasons it's just stupid in my opinion what we need to do is we just need to check a few things first so you can see we've got the fuses at the top so i'm going to check the main wires first obviously you can do a quick easy check as regards a visual check i can't say anything wrong there's nothing rubbing there's nothing that particularly looks bad again that doesn't mean anything really so what i'm going to do and we're also going to do this with no wiring diagrams and no nothing i'm going to show you how to do that because you know with something like this it's fairly simple to be fair even if you're unsure of what fuse it is don't worry about it just use your multimeter put one end on here one end on one of them fuses and then you'll you'll find out you know quite easily which wire goes to where without wiring diagrams or anything but first all right so first thing i'm gonna do is just going to check the fuse so we're just going to see if we can get power coming through here uh onto the actual fuse once we know we can we know that them fuses are all okay so not worried about the fuses now what i'm going to do bring the camera down to here can we get to this here we can so all i'm going to do now is I'm going to put one lead, oh, that's the wrong one, that's for the headlight. All right, so all I'm doing now is just testing that we've got no broken the, break in the wires. And I'm also testing which wire goes to where. So that's the wire we need. Look. 0.3, 0.2, it's perfect. Yep, that's the other one. All right, and when we go to the other ones, they don't do anything. So we have our two wires to our fuse boxes, and we're good to go, basically. So we know, as regards the main, the main wires, um, that we're okay. So all i got to do now is just check the other one, but I'll do that off camera. I've already done that, and I know it's fine, so... But that's how you do it. It's very, very simple, as you can see. Now, what we can do is we've got another couple of wires here, but we can also test them as well. But, I mean, it's really, really looking like now, you know, it, it, it is the module. So, we will just quickly test the powers going into it to make sure when we switch the ignition on, we've got power going into it, which is trying to power the module, but the module isn't, you know, letting it. So, yeah, let's do that now. Right, a couple more things we can do, because the reason why I tested the circuit first with ohms is because when you test a loaded circuit, what I mean by a loaded circuit is something that powers something, uh, you need to test it with a load, because I've done another video proving a ghost voltage, I think it was a Volkswagen Polo, where when you tested the backlight with a multimeter, it said 12 volts, as soon as you put a bulb in, the, the voltage would go, it's a ghost voltage, so... You need a load. Now, this really isn't a big enough load for this, but it, 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 it helps. Um, you would need, I've, I've also done another video on how to make test lights for big loads uh, with bulbs and stuff, but I just haven't got them with me. But at least this will tell us something. We already know that the, the continuity in these wires are good. So when I put this in here, the ignition is on, by the way. So, um, 
you can see there can you see is it showing me ah, it is yeah so that's another way of testing it um so what i've done is i turned the ignition off and i i got the first plug here and i went through it oh well look at that now well there we go that's burnt and i wonder if that's blown up the module i didn't see that i just literally seen that now hmm because what i was going to say is i've got the ignition on and i was just testing powers and grounds and stuff and we've got an ignition power now i don't know how many ignition powers we need in this we could need a couple all I'm trying to show you is just generalization how you can actually test things. So when I turned the ignition off on this, we basically had nothing. And now when I turn the ignition on, on one of the wires at least, we have ignition power. So that's good. But looking at that now, that isn't good. So that's touch something. I wonder if that was part of the accident. And I'm also wondering now, has that blown up the module? Hmm. That's actually paint over that. I can see all the paint on there. That's not good. So we're going to have to sort that out. As well as the module. But I don't think that's our problem because, like I said, I can't communicate with the module and I wonder, which we'll quickly test now, we'll test C, we'll test the continuity between, between that pin and the hole to see is that just a fresh hole or have we got no continuity going to that pin? whatsoever so this is going to be a good little test if i can hold it in there which i can't well nope that's not helping is it am i on that pin i might not be on that pin Hmm, I need my back probes and I haven't got any with me. Is that going to go in? Nope. Alright, I'm going to have to sort this out first. I'm going to have to get something to poke in there. Right, I'm going to use a SIM card popper outer. That will go in between the pins. Good. And then we can put that on there. We'll just make sure that that's working. Here it is. Right. So we're making connection at the top. We are making connection. So, and if you actually look closely, I get the camera in a little closer. Focus. Focus. You can see it's still shiny. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to repair it, but it's not causing us a problem, I don't think. I don't think it's helping matters, though, to be honest. Anyway, so what do we know now? Well, we know are uh, as regards these wires here see i don't know where these wires go so i'd have to trace all them back but i'm not going to do that because i still don't think we need to but this is where a wiring diagram would come kind of in handy but again i want to show you without doing wiring, wiring diagrams um can i see where the wire goes not really all right so i do know so far we know we've got ignition power um we know we've got a dodgy wire but we also know our powers for our main wires are good or not that well the powers are good but also the wires are good so it is kind of leaving the um the module 
so what can we do next without wiring diagrams let me think right so think about it what do we know so far well we know our wires the, the main wires are good we know we've got no brakes and we know they've powered we know we've got ignition power on one of these connections but we don't know if we should have ignition power on the others but i don't think so and the way i can test that is i get my multimeter out because that wire is testing good i'm going to put one on battery negative or positive one on battery negative and one on here Right, so we're getting 2.3 volts. So, are we getting 2.3 volts? Where's my little, my little phone um, SIM card? Um, we're getting the same. Let me just put this in line so you can see what is going on. That might make things a little bit easier. All right, can you see that? I think you can. So. I'm going to test at the break of the wire at the top, okay, and you can see we're getting 2.3 volts. I'm going to test here, and again you can see we're getting 2.3 volts. So even though that wire is damaged, there is still voltage there. So there's going to be signal voltage there and all sorts. Um, so from the looks of it, apart from the damage, we've got all our voltage. 2.7 so again that's going to most probably be again without looking at wiring diagrams it's going to most probably be you know as you turn the steering wheel sensors and stuff like that this other one could be for that so it knows what angle it's at and what power it needs because when you turn the steering wheel this essentially kicks on and gives you your power um depending on you know what you're doing and stuff so it monitors everything so i think i think that wire was going to cause a problem but I think we're going to get away with it in the sense of I don't think that's our issue. Um, now, it could be that that wire is earthed out and blown up the module. That's a possibility uh, because right next to it here where that was plugged in, you can see right there is the metal plate. So this connector was literally right there like that. Um, and like I said, this is the issue with accident damage vehicles. You just don't know what's happened. That could have been done in the accident it could be a completely different thing uh, personally i've never seen a damage there in a normal one I've, I've replaced a few of these on on volkswagens on the golfs on the roomster all them sort of stuff and i've never seen that there uh, but then again i've only replaced a couple of them so you know i haven't replaced hundreds of them or anything but that could be a common issue i'm not 100 percent sure but it's certainly something to worth to look at anyway so yeah, that's what we know so far. So let's do a little bit more and uh, we can see if we do have an issue with the module, which I kind of think we do, personally. Right, you can't do this with everything, unfortunately. This is a fairly simple system, the way it works. With You have a sensor on the rack, I believe, and you know you have the module here so it knows where it is, what angle it is and stuff like that. And it's just a straightforward power and the signal wires. So, you know, with ECUs and anything with multiple, multiple wires going in, you can't just do this because they have multiple powers, different voltages, just like this. This has an ignition voltage and it has some uh, signal voltage you can see, you know, 2.2s and 2.7s and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, don't don't just do this now. I'm just trying to show you with something simple how you can do it with kind of no wiring diagrams and simple-ish tools. So I'm pretty confident now to say that this is a module issue. Now, is it because of this? That's just, I don't know at the minute. I'm gonna to have to repair that first, obviously. Uh, it could be because of that arced out and, you know, and blow up the module, you know, it could be, it could just be the module, that could just be a pure coincidence. But what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna whip out this. As far as I remember, there's just three bolts to it, two or three bolts. And then there should be a couple of lines at the back of it. it should be like a metal line, that the the um, high pressure line and the low pressure line. So let me whip this off, and uh, we'll see what, what we're what we're looking at. I was going to try and film taking this off, but I just can't. You just I, I'm barely seeing myself. We have a bolt under here, which I've just taken off, 13 mil, and then there's one under here which I can't quite see, and I can't even get the camera in. And I think there's one at the back, so they're really awkward to actually see. Um, but one thing I did forget to mention, the reason why I'm pretty confident that, you know, it is a module 
is the fact that I can't communicate with it. That's the biggest key for me. Um, we have got wires that we know we've got ignition power. Uh, and we know we've got other powers there. So we know we've got powers coming into it. We know the main wires, obviously, when it kicks out, is also powered. Because this is where, this is, the, these main wires is is what makes everything work. That's why they're so thick, because the amount of amps that are going through here is, is, is quite crazy. So we know they're good. So if I could communicate with it, then it's a different story. Um, you know, we'd have to maybe go a bit further into checking. And like I said, be very careful doing this, like, you know, with something really complicated with, you know, with 30, 40 wires, because the chances are you're going to have two or three Earths, you're going to have two or three powers and blah, 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 you know, and we know that the powers, the powers in the Earths are here. I did check that and, it, you know, it's all fine. So, um, yeah, that's why I'm pretty confident to say that it is the module. But uh, we will see because I have ordered one, second hand one, and um, yeah, we'll see am I right or should I gone further? Put your answers in the comments down below before I continue what you would have done. We're going to leave it there as a bit of suspense to see. So what I want you to do down below is tell me what you would have done. Would you have done any different? Would you have done more? Would you have done less? And uh, we're going to see from the next part, which I'll release in a couple of days, um, of what happened. We can then see, you know, what we would have done together, basically. And also, any of the other, you know, obviously proper mechanics out there, we can uh, show some of their comments in the next video. Sorted! As always, get your hands dirty, though. See you for the next one.